And when you want to give something presents, you have to consult nature. And there is where design comes in. If you think of brick, for instance, you say to brick, what do you want, brick? And brick says to you, I like an arch. And if you say to brick, look, marshes are expensive, and I can use a, a concrete lintel over you. What do you think of that, brick? Brick says, I like an arch. And it's important, you see, that you honor the material which you use. You don't bandy it around as though you said, well, we have a lot of material around. We can do it one way, we can do it another. It's not true. You can only do it if you honor the brick and glorify the brick instead of just shortchanging it. any other medium that Khan uses, in the same way that he uses wood and concrete, he creates an environment using the ideas of silence and of light. And I think especially with light, because light also is not only a medium, but it's like it changes the mediums that it touches. It's like you can see it, you can feel it, but you don't hear anything. So all you have left to do is just kind of experience what's there. The way Colin makes the spaces work together in the extra library is just incredible to me. He's got the large space in the middle 
and it just seems to fit perfectly with the small floors. The focus of the building, it just goes to the middle because of the space he left there. And so the floors and how they're also similar to each other, it just works really well with the atrium because you look up and you see the enormous volume of space with the floors and it just works together so nicely. The circulation of the building is also just so intricate. In a way, there's stairs um, in the corner and so they're kind of put off to the side, but that just creates a uniform circulation for all of the floors. Once you go up the stairs, no matter what floor you come out on, you can circle through the floor and go back to the stairs. You can find what books you're looking for. You can go in and out through all the shelves and still eventually end back up at the stairs. I think it's really interesting how well Khan fixes the tension between using a circle within a square. Because similarly to Exeter, Hodges is built on this square on a square on a square. And so that when you look at Exeter in the same way from a volumetric standpoint, you see a big column in the center surrounded by square concentric squares that just stacked on top of each other. And so I think that from a massing standpoint, there are so many things that you can take away from Exeter that you can apply to other buildings that you're designing. Thank you.